Happy New Year boys and girls. In this video I wanted to show you how to escape tutorial hell if you feel like you're still stuck in it for 2024 or if you're watching this in another year uh, you can use this video in order to escape tutorial hell. It's still going to require work on your part obviously the two main things that I'm going to be teaching you are going to be problem solving skills and how to learn programming languages. I myself in this video will be learning uh, the Ruby programming language and explaining how I solve problems. So you can adapt my problem solving method and uh, the way that I'm going to show you to learn the programming language is just going to work for everybody because it's just specific steps that you can take in order to actually learn it. Okay. So first of all, if you don't know what tutorial hell is, it's effectively you relying on an external piece of information. You're writing an application and you're stuck. You don't know how to proceed for forward. You go look at YouTube, Stack Overflow, ChatGPT, LinkedIn, wherever you get your information from, documentation. It's not necessarily bad to get your information from there. It is bad when you do it all the time. You don't want to go into surgery and your doctor whipping out the anat an anatomy of a human being, right? You don't want to be doing the same thing as a programmer. To make it worse, when you go to the external source of information, you skip the first step, which is problem solving. You haven't actually solved the problem. You're just training yourself to copy paste things from places. So when other videos actually tell you to just go build a project, you're going to learn a ton of stuff. There will be some repetition. There will be some problem solving ability that you will have to apply. But if you apply a little bit of problem solving and then you Google for the individual components, you're still copy pasting code. So you may be training problem solving, but then you're not actually learning the programming language. You're learning how to copy paste and then you're incapable of eliciting those programming language components for individual pieces of the problem that you have solved in your mind. Hopefully that makes sense. So again, to summarize in this video, I'm going to be learning the Ruby programming language. I'm going to be doing a project called Tic-Tac-Toe. I'm going to be explaining two primary things, how to problem solve and how to learn a programming language. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. If you would like to know C Sharp as I do it, even though in this video we're going to be doing Ruby, uh, there is a link in the description to my course. Go ahead and check it out. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and get started. So I wanted to build tic-tac-toe. I didn't go through any kind of problem solving process. I've just gone ahead and found the code. And uh, when I was checking out Ruby, Ruby was just installed on my computer, so I can get some kind of script and get it running. Okay, so personally, I don't know Ruby. I know C Sharp. I know a bunch of other programming languages. So this perhaps for learning for me will be a little bit easier. I'm going to try to highlight the things that are easier for me that are not going to be easy for you and which you will potentially need to know. Because I said I missed the problem solving step for, uh, steps for this, uh, let's talk a little bit about how I personally like to problem solve. So let's say we have a game called Tic-Tac-Toe. So Tic-Tac-Toe is a big problem. You know how Tic-Tac-Toe works in your head very simply, but you have to drill down into details in order to be able to translate it into code. So there are really two steps that you have here. First, understanding the problem and then translate it into the programming language. If you don't understand the problem, you can't translate it. And if you don't understand the programming language, again, you can't translate the problem. You can't actually write it out. So first of all, we need to understand the problem. How do you understand the problem? Uh, there is a method called divide and conquer where you just have a big problem and then you start thinking about the pieces of, of the problem in order to break the problem down into smaller chunks and then you are capable of writing a program for each of these individual smaller chunks. Okay, uh, the process that I personally like to go through is uh, when I'm breaking down the problem, I, I think about data, context and interaction. Data would be things like the board, uh, you have X uh, or nodes and crosses, so cross and zero. You have a notion of player one, you have notion of player two, which are really kind of like the same thing as the cross and the zero, okay? Uh, the context over here will be just the game. Uh, the reason you have the context is there can be many layers to a game, and I'm just gonna put a line over here because uh, we're gonna briefly talk, talk 
uh, about poker and uh, how there can be many contexts within poker. Okay, so the context in this case are just uh, two players uh, playing a game of uh, tic-tac-toe. Okay, and they're taking turns. So f for taking turns, that is the actual interaction. So with how how does this data move about or shift about within this context? So you need to have a player one to take a turn of let's say X onto the board. You then have player two that takes a turn of zero onto the board. And I'm not doing anything special here. I'm literally just describing how you play the game. And here are going to be the individual details that I'm able to code up. The things that happen is after the first player takes a turn, the next player needs to take a turn. And then the first player goes again. They keep doing this. So there needs to be some kind of exit out of this loop. And this exit, let's say we will call it a win condition. The win condition is then something you can drill down further into where you can have uh, these occurrences of the same element. So if the same elements are diagonally, this is the win condition. Take pen and paper, take your problem, write out these details, and then you can actually create them as code as individual components and then piece them together in order to get your final application. Now, a little bit more on the context in the poker scenario, the context is really meant to be a compression mechanism. So if you have a game of poker, you have the overall game. And then within the game, you can have players that are coming and leaving. And let's say that this is G, like the overall game. Within game, you have rounds. Okay. So a round is, uh, I don't know the exact terminology. Let's say a round is when the card gets dealt out until uh, they are all collected again and reshuffled. So that's one round. And then as there is a betting round then, so that's an additional context within there. Okay, so then there is a betting uh, BT. Uh, this is D. Basically, this is a betting round, okay? The thing that I'm trying to illustrate over here is as you're breaking down the problem, the piece that you're breaking it down into is kind of like its own thing, like a round, uh, that uh, you really have a good understanding of it. It's compressed very well. You understand what a round is and you can talk about the round as an individual problem and discuss it separately apart from uh, the mechanics of the actual game. So before actually copy pasting code, etc., you probably want to understand the problem solving process that the author of that solution went through. If you don't understand, break down the problem into these details yourself, and then you can understand, okay, this part, I can find it in code over there, or this part, I can try to find it in code over here. And uh, let's say these two parts, I can see that there are some players over there. Uh, I can start uh, to effectively train my problem solving ability and map it across to the solution that I'm copy pasting. That way you don't actually need to rely on somebody else solving the problem and then trying to understand their code. You can create this intermediary form in your mind and then translate it to the programming language yourself. Okay, so now all you need to know is the programming language after you have elicited all the details of the problem. So how do you actually learn the programming language? Before we dive into this again, I'll just reiterate, it's important to learn how to problem solve first because you're gonna struggle to learn the individual components because you don't understand how they map to these individual pieces of the problem that we're solving. Okay, that is very important that you make that connection that this board, I know what board this is talking about. I know what idea we're trying to represent. Okay. If you don't understand what idea an individual line of code maps to, you've missed the whole point. So make sure that you've taken the problem, solved it, understand the details, and you can understand to what parts of those details this code maps across to. Because I understand the details, I know things like classes, objects, functions, while loops, etc. If you're new to this syntax, you're effectively going to need to learn these concepts as you're going along as well. This is the 
main point where you want to whip out the documentation. You want to Google. You want to make as much as effort as possible to understand the concepts of these constructs and how they're used in the context of the problem. Things that I would do at this point is I would uh, take a look at how the class is defined with uh, class X uh, and you have to put an end on the end and then you can invoke a function on it. So let's say I will create a playground.rb. Uh, the sample is really just a sample that I'm going to work from. And the first thing that I would do is I would just uh, try to recreate something like this. Uh, let's say class end. And then again, I'll just do new. Uh, let's uh, define a function over here, uh, place an end over here, and uh, just a simple hello world. So how do you print something? Uh, looks like we have a print function. Let's say print hello world, and we will have fn over here. Uh, let's invoke it. I'll pull up the terminal, uh, Ruby. This is going to be playground RB, and there we have it. What's the important detail here as I was testing things out? From looking at sample RB, I was able to remember the syntax of class and how to define a function. And all of this came from memory other than print. So I have effectively one fault that I relied on on looking on the original sample. So what I would do at this point is just delete the whole thing and start again. So I'm creating class X. Again, trying to remember the syntax, def fn. And maybe this time I'm going to spice it up a little bit. I'm going to add a parameter. This is going to be end. And I don't actually know how to use the parameter just yet, but I'm just going to go ahead and print. I know that it's print now, right? I remember that kind of stuff. And I'm going to put hello world over here. Again, I'm going to use x, new, and fn over here. I'm going to supply five because I know it needs that parameter. I'm not doing with it anything with it just yet. And then I'm going to gamble. I'm just going to say put an I on the end there. And there we have it. I don't actually know how to do concatenation. So let's take a look perhaps at how I can do this. I have a feeling uh, there is going to be some kind of conversion operator. Anyway, not to dwell on this uh, too far. This is where at this point I would go to the documentation. I would look up how do I actually convert a number to a string? Go ahead and write it out somewhere over here and then go through the process again. I would delete the whole thing again and write it out from memory. Okay. And that way I actually know that I've now learned how to write print. I now know how to write the number to string conversion. And these are all like syntactical little pieces and I'm getting the repetition in. So this playground, anything that I want to try out, I'm going to try out in this playground and I'm going to make sure that I'm going to be able to do it from memory. The main thing that I want to be able to do from memory is actually do this project, tic-tac-toe, okay? If you're doing a Twitter clone and you're like, it's, uh, I, it took me three months to make it, no, what, do I just start over? Yes, that is exactly what you do. Uh, I think a very, very good example of uh, this kind of repetition method, if you know George Hotz, uh, like the Sony hacker, whatever, uh, comma AI guy, uh, he was making some kind of debugger tool. I was watching in one of his presentations and he wasn't like a C or a C++ programmer, so he didn't know anything about software engineering, engineering or anything like that. And the first time he made it, he was talking about the first time he made it, it was crap. Then he made the same program a second time and was still crap. And I think uh, he said it was like third or fourth time of him remaking it is where he was actually proud of what he made. So yeah, if you're making a Twitter clone, do it again. The whole thing. Yeah, maybe it's not going to take three months this time. Maybe it's going to take two months and uh, the next pass will take uh, one and a half months. But check yourself. Make sure that when you are doing these repetitions, you're not looking at your old source code. Perhaps you are, but uh, make sure that the source of knowledge is yourself rather than some kind of external source. Okay. So I'm not going to be boring you with the details. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create attempt underscore one over here. And this is going to be my first attempt at uh, copy pasting uh, this solution not control A, control C and control V like this, but rather writing it out from memory. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to skim over and I'm effectively going to, I don't know, try to speed play this part or skip it. And I have a uh, 
what's it called a stopwatch over here so uh, i'm gonna press the button i'm gonna see how long it takes and uh, i'm gonna do it again and again until i can do it from memory and we'll see how many attempts i'm expecting three four attempts uh, for me to effectively be able to write it from memory uh, let's go ahead and get started so starting the timer Okay, so here we are. Basically, my first attempt took me 31 minutes. The process was something like me basically copy pasting one by one individual parts and again, just relating how are these related to the problems, etc. So a couple of interesting things from this implementation. First of all, the program is a little bit backwards, like the play function is over here and then the using functions are at the top. I much prefer kind of like having the main function at the top and then the things that we're using below it. So uh, draw board, we're using nested arrays. I had to figure out things like map. This is a very weird syntax, but here is effectively a lambda. So this is the parameter and here is the next statement or expression that should be evaluated. Things like this is effectively an index of or position of element. Uh, you can have transpose. This is a very weird function, but uh, I think I had the result of it uh, somewhere over here uh, where if you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it will transpose it. So uh, uh, the columns will effectively become rows now. And that is uh, partly how it calculates if uh, the, uh, the game has been won or not. 
So the reason I'm pointing out these things is not necessarily of how uh, the tic-tac-toe game works, it's just to understand that I have understood the details of it and I have uh, encountered things that I don't necessarily understand. So for example, uh, game one here, things have been written on one line that wasn't effectively cleared. So I did add some of my own things where, okay, yeah, these uh, dia win conditions over here, write them out a little bit uh, differently, write out the print functions here a little bit differently because I'm confident I know what these are. Another thing that was very weird is how it validates the, the move. It basically ba does it based on try catch. The variables here at the top are a little bit useless. So as I'm registering the, these details, I'm figuring out, do I actually like these details? Do I want to substitute some of them? Do I think they're efficient? Uh, this is a way that you can effectively adapt the solution to yourself. So after you've copied it a couple of times. So that was the first attempt uh, and I had to copy a bunch of things. I had to go to the playground a bunch of times. I had to figure out what an each loop is. Uh, what was the other option? probably something that I'm going to have to remember each with in index uh, this weird syntax over here. The way that the if statements work is a little bit wonky. So you return this only if, right? So the return statement starts at the beginning, but then you will actually carry on execution <laughs> if uh, the if statement after the return hasn't triggered. So there are weird things like this. Uh, let's see if I can actually remember them on my second pass. So I'm going to go ahead and close attempt one. Uh, let's go ahead and create attempt two RB and starting the stopwatch, I'm going to do exactly the same. Okay. There we have the second attempt. So this time it was uh, 14 minutes. I still had to check out some things. So what did I have to take a look at? I've messed up uh, this uh, syntax over here. I've put a pipe over here instead of a comma. So you have to put a comma over here whenever you're deconstructing whatever the result is over here. And I misspelled map. It's not maps, it's just map, okay? Otherwise, I had a couple of issues uh, there and here, which were just naming the functions wrong. Uh, so all of that was OK. Uh, I know that there was, I think, one, 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 one more option on the end here, but the code worked regardless. So, ah, so it was sort. So if you type in them differently, I guess this is a loss in behavior, but it's again something that I forgot. Um, it works regardless. So now that I just understand that, okay, my application should work if I am asking for something like DA before, if I wouldn't have sort and I run the application, DA, that's an invalid move. However, that is a valid move. So that was the second pass. I am pretty sure on the third pass, I will be able to do it no problem. Uh, so let's go ahead, uh, copy this across. Uh, I'm gonna rename this to three, I remove everything and uh, yeah, uh, again, time myself and uh, hopefully I get it uh, this time without, uh, you know, actually looking at anything. So let's go ahead and start and continue.
And there we have it. So the third attempt took me just under nine minutes. And uh, yeah, uh, so three attempts uh, to really not knowing anything to be able to recreate tic-tac-toe. If you think about the first attempt, 30, the second attempt, uh, half that, 15, and then the third attempt, nine minutes, it's really an hour to effectively learn how to map uh, collections, how if statement works, how loop, uh, loops work, uh, how some, uh, you know, a, a funky solution over here. It uh, obviously took uh, me time to stop here and figure out how this works. I don't think I've ever seen it done quite this way. And then, yeah, just having a playground uh, by the side to test out the individual concepts and uh, how they work. This will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and you got a gist of what I was talking about. Remember, if you want to escape tutorial hell, you have to learn to do two things. First is problem solve. The second one is actually learn the programming language and then be able to translate from one to the other. So from problem solving, if you're extracting a solution from somewhere, understand how the person actually arrived at that solution. So you're going to understand the problem. And then whatever you're copying, don't just copy it. Be able to write it from memory. If you are struggling to write it from memory, you don't actually understand what the code is doing. So to write the code from memory is actually going to force you to understand that first part, to actually understand the idea behind that code, because otherwise it's going to be very, very hard to recall from memory that exact piece of code as part of the whole bigger solution. Again, big thank you for watching. Don't forget if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, again, leave them in the comment section. And if you would like the source code for this video and my other videos, please come support me on Patreon. I will really appreciate it. And a big and special thank you goes out to all of my current Patreon supporters. You really help me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.